Subdural hematomas are fluid collections under the bone and under the surface of the covering of the brain or the dura, uh, but outside of the brain. It's between the dura and the brain. Subdural fluid, subdural bleeding. Subdural hematomas are very common in the elderly population uh, and can be either a blood clot that's new, but also and very commonly a fluid collection related to some prior bleeding that is now a collection of fluid that isn't going away or causing symptoms. There was a relatively recent randomized controlled trial that I think is going to influence our management of subdural hematomas that I wanted to, to briefly talk about. Subdural fluid collections are frustrating for uh, neurosurgeons to deal with. Uh, we operate on them sometimes, we drain them, they seem to come back, they can be aggravating and stressful for patients. This randomized controlled trial that recently was published in the Journal of Neurosurgery gives us one additional treatment option uh, for resolution of subdural fluid collections. And the treatment is to do a five-week course of two different medications. One is a torvastatin, which is typically used to treat high cholesterol. And the other medication is a steroid. So the atorvastatin is thought to be anti-inflammatory and it, it promotes a process called angiogenesis and we prescribe 20 milligrams daily for five weeks. The other medication is called dexamethasone and it is a steroid commonly used for cranial problems such as swelling from a tumor. What they found in the trial is a very low dose of dexamethasone for five weeks after the detection of a subdural fluid collection helped that subdural fluid collection get smaller. And the recommended dosages were a little bit funny for our U.S. population and U.S. pharmacies because uh, this study was done internationally. But we are going to recommend to do four milligrams once a day of dexamethasone for two weeks and then two milligrams once a day for two weeks and then one milligram once a day for a week and, and then to stop the medication. And that, that isn't a particularly high dose of steroid but I think it has been shown again to have a positive effect. I'm excited about this because it gives us an additional tool to use to give some improvement in the subdural fluid collections because what we don't want to end up having to do is surgery which could have been prevented by medication or in some cases maybe we've drained the fluid and we need a little bit of medication to help the fluid completely resolve so we don't have to go back in and drain it again. In all cases of subdural hematoma and subdural fluid collections, we like to check head CTs periodically until we've proven that the fluid collection has completely resolved. So we may find on the first head CT after you leave the hospital that we're making progress, but we may recommend to check another scan because we want to make sure that the, the pathology, the problem has, has resolved and that we don't need to do any further treatment.